so here's what it finally looks like the Roku mini tanks we got the abrams tank the m270 as well as the hemet so first we're going to take a look at the m1a2 abrams tank and it's actually painted in the nato woodland three color camouflage so these are actually hand painted markings based on the actual camouflage diagrams and reference photos there actually are designated colors for nato green nato black and nato brown and i've also colored the tracks black and if you're wondering what the underside looks like a little roco logo there i use tamiya spray cans for the primer and nato green and vallejo for brush painting and tamiya again for clear coat so starting here from the back, we have the 120 millimeter main gun, coaxial gun here, and the gas turbine engine here in the back. On the sides, we have the taillights, and I painted them in Vallejo's black red. And down here, we have this little hoop, and this could be used for towing, and you can also swap it out for a hook. In the back, we have this driving gear for the treads to move. It's actually a separate piece, and then we have some panels here on the side. We got some tiny little bolted on details, and here at the bottom, we have the wheels and the treads. They are one piece, so it makes a pain to paint them. And then we have some details. These are actually separately applied the box and the grenade launcher as well as this basket here. We also got the spare tread and a spare wheel. Now I did find it interesting that the treads that they use are spoof which are totally not accurate and it should look a little more like this one. Alright so now let's make our way to the front where we have some mud flaps over the treads and then we have this panel here for unit identification turret basket here filled with lots of little parts. We've got jerry cans for gasoline fuel as well as some bags, some ammo boxes and some random pipes. Now I did find it interesting that the NATO camouflage actually lines up with the turret even if it's facing backwards so I guess it doesn't matter which direction that it is facing. Now let's go take a look at the roof. Here we have the gunner's sight and then we have this hatch. This actually has a hole for the gun if you actually want to place it in there. Then we got the commander's thermal sight and there is this gun mount for this other hatch. There are two panels here in the middle and some panels on the outer edges and there's also this pole that sticks out. So I also made a second Abrams tank because one alone is not good enough. So here are the spare wheels are actually in different places, which is custom like the real life one. And here's also a view of the back where we have some vents on the top. And for this one, I properly added the headlights, which you can see right here behind the bracket. This one also has a different variation of the camouflage, so it is slightly different. Although they are both based on diagrams, the real life ones are going to have some variation as well as I've seen in a lot of photos. Now, since it was a train load, I had the turn facing backwards, but just in case you want to see it in the normal position, here's what it looks like. Definitely the Aversenk is one of my favorite military vehicles, and since we're in the front, we can actually see where the driver's hatch is. Now, let's compare it to my Artitech M1A1 one Abrams tank which is painted in the iconic desert tan livery so you can see all the intricate little details and the weathering the painting versus my Roka one which is made of plastic. The Arctic is a more accurate version of the Abrams tank so you can see the way they did the treads that's how it's actually supposed to look as well as the triangular slope right next to the gun that is actually too wide on the Roko. You can also see the spare wheel is very thin on the Arctic but thick and chunky on Roko's. So here's how they compare from the front angle. You can see this thing is not the same size as that. And here's how they look like from the side. NATO green, very clean, while well, Artitech is weathered. And here's how they look like on the DODX 40,000 series. Flat car, and this can hold two of them. And here's how they look like from the front angle and the side. Definitely these cars look really, really nice with tanks on them. In addition to the Abrams tank, we have the M270 MLRS, or Multiple Launch Rocket System. And this is also painted in the NATO Woodland 3-color camouflage. So starting from the front, we got some headlights and the blinker lights, as well as some mud flaps. The cab windows are covered by shades, an armored window on the side, and a hatch on top. And we got this antenna here on the side, some nice molded on details, and this hoop in the front. Now my favorite detail is actually this shovel here, just because it's a different color from everything else and just adds more detail. There also is this interesting pattern that's going on in the hole, it's like the zigzag pattern and it goes down the back. Where you can see the rocket pods, there are 12 of them, it's actually twice as much as the high Mars. Lots of little details like tail lights, the mud flaps, the hook, and this molded on towing cable. So on this side of the M270, we have these vents which are different from the other side. And here's how they look like from the front. Now to activate the M270's missiles or rockets, you lift this thing up and then you can have a better view of the stuff that's underneath inside. And they are supported by hydraulics, one on each side, so that's two of them. And this definitely makes that look a lot cooler. Now there also is some details underneath, it's a bit hollow section. And you can also twist this thing around so that it can fire from the side. Here's another view from the back and another one for the front. 
And now here's the Oshkosh Hemet M977 cargo truck. And you may have seen this guy in other videos, although now he is painted in tan. And there's lots of tiny little details. We've got the folded side view mirrors. We got the towing shackles, as well as the stirrup step that's actually all separately applied details. And here's how the inside of the cab looks like. And the windshield wiper is actually molded on. There's also Oshkosh logo if you can't see in the middle. And the windows are actually made by this single plastic piece that goes inside the cab. Really nice and reflective in the light. Then we got the separately applied handlebar as well as these tanks for detailing. And here's a view of what it looks like from underneath. You can see it's all different parts since this is a kit. There's a fuel tank at the bottom and the wheels are actually made of rubber. They are separate please so thankfully I don't have to paint them. And there's like a mud flap here, lots of little molded on details. And now we're going to take a look at the rear where we have the coolest detail of this, which is the crane. And it's actually fully functional. So all these hydraulics, they can rotate and you can actually customize this if you want to have the arm extended out. And I just left it as this. I really wish I could actually push it more, but it seems to be stuck like that. Anyways, here's how the other side looks like. There are some details underneath and there also is a spare tire. And next to that, we have this pole, which is a winch. You can see that pulley up in there and it is designed to lift the spare tire out of the holder, but someone has said that it is actually rarely used and you won't really see this in the prototype much and it's interesting there's actually this whole section behind the cab and there's a window on each side now here's a look at the flatbed there is a bit of texture in there and it is optional to add in this canopy, although I've never seen a real one with this. Now, in addition to the Roco mini tanks, which I got from Arsenal M from Germany, we have some 3D printed models by Nelson Model Works on eBay. So first, we're going to take a look at this Humvee. This is actually an armored variant of it. Here's a view of the front. Got the headlights, the blinker lights, the wheels, which are connected with some suspension springs down below. We also have some lifting hooks, as well as this air intake for deep water wading. We had a gun shield for the turn on top, side view mirror, and you can see these side doors are very up armored so there is a lot of bulk to them and here in the back we got the trunk got a slope some tail lights as well as some molded on details and here's a view of it what it looks like from the other side and for the bottom i painted it black so next we have the m1123 troop carrier humvee so you can compare the window dividers actually really thin on this one really thick on that one the doors armored versus unarmored it just has this x so this Humvee is designed to carry troops, so it has this tent here in the back, some benches as well. Here's a view of what it looks like on this side, and you may notice that there's this strip that's actually colored differently, and that's just because it is actually painted with Vallejo's Iraqi Sand versus the Tamiya. Alright, so our last vehicle is going to be the FMTV. This is the M1078, and this is the armored version of it, which you'll often see many times in the modern US military. And here's a view of it, what it looks like on the side. Sorry for my really bad paint, but it's definitely not easy to paint things in a perfect circle with just the brush on a 3d printed model and you can see the edges of this require a lot of sanding which I did not do and here's a view of what it looks like from the back we have flatbed here spare tire behind the cab and here's how it looks like underneath which is an interesting design and here's how it looks like from above you can see all these 3d printed lines and there is a hatch in the front Alright, so with all the new vehicles, I needed another flat car to hold them. So this is an Atlas RTTX 89 foot flat car. And my first impression of this was that it is really, really long. Alright, so let's start here from the front where we have this coupler here in the middle next to the airline hose. And there are some grab irons on the sides, a stirrup step underneath and this gangplank on one side. There also is this coupler cut lever. On the side, we have some printed detailing as well as this jack pad. Then we have RTTX as well as the road number more printed detailings and they go further down the car you can also see a bit of the air brake detailing on the bottom actually a line that goes all the way across then we have the ttx speed letter line logo <laughs> and this handbrake on the side. So on the other end, as well as the other side, they look pretty much identical to the other side. Just the only difference I really tell is like the air brake detail at the bottom, they're gonna be different. So the inside of the gangplank is actually painted white. And there are also these two channels that run along. They actually have some holes on the inside. That's where you put in the trailer hitches. And there are some indentations on the outer edge of the car, as well as some holes. This car does have a metal frame, so it is quite heavy. Here's what it looks like underneath. 
It is detailed down below with the ribbing and the spine as well as the air brake details. You can see this line that actually connects from each side and then here's what it looks like all the way across the car. So it does come with some trailer hitches and this one is fully assembled. You can actually rotate it around. Unlike the other one where you have to actually glue everything together, here's how it looks like when it's on the actual car. And there's also a black version of it. It also comes with this really thin piece which is actually a sidewall as well as these things which I actually don't know what it's for. But for the sidewall you can just insert the pegs into the side of the hole and here's how they look like. So here is our final military train. It looks really nice and sharp, but this is what it took to make this. Oh, and also this Tamiya.
So for my final thoughts, I think these Roko mini tanks, they're perfect for HO scale military trains. Since it is a model kit, it requires a lot of elbow grease and time as well as skill and supplies. So definitely it was a large learning experience for me, like what glue to use, Tamiya cement or CA super glue. And the instructions that came with the packaging, it wasn't always clear on what to do exactly. They give you a vague idea and they expected you to do everything on your own. So there's a lot of like these spare parts where you don't really know where they go. And I also learned how to spray paint models with the Tamiya rattle cans, which is necessary if you want to use their primer and also use it for the base coat and the clear coat. And you will need a respirator and goggles. Don't go cheap on the respirator. Get a 3M one because the first one I got, I could still smell it. And these fumes are toxic and bad for your lungs. And you also want to do it outside on a piece of cardboard just away from everyone. I recommend doing like a parking lot. And you also can't spray paint whenever you want to because the weather it has to be below 50% humidity and it can't be cold either. And I really recommend using Vallejo paint for brush painting because it's also water based. While Tamiya requires retarder and thinner, although it worked the first day, it was really bad the second day. It used like brush marks and I would get this weird white texture to it. These paints are really meant for airbrushing, not brush painting. I also recommend using primer for your models. If you don't use primer, the spray paint, it won't stick as easily. So you're going to have to waste more paint and the paint will pull and it'll cover up some details. So definitely primer first. And at the end, I used some Tamiya clear coat and this is good to protect the paints from models. I actually had one where a hair got stuck into it and you can tell the clear coat works because that thing will not rub off. These models aren't the most accurate, but they are pretty good for their price. Right now, they're actually made by Arsenal M, the Abrams tank and the M270. They were like $10 and they come from Germany. Originally, my M270 MRS, they had just plain green because that's why I've seen it in real life. But honestly, that's kind of boring. So definitely go with the NATO camouflage because it looks really sick. As for the 3D printed models, which I got from Mechsmith or Nelson Model Works, he actually sells a lot of these 3D printed models on eBay. And I purchased them originally because their price was kind of fair, but they do have some imperfections. I think they stand as a nice substitute if you want a military train. But if there is a model kit version available or a ready-made model, I would go for that one rather than 3D printed because there is a limit on what you can do with 3D prints. And it is in one or two pieces, so it's not going to be separately applied. So you can't get that fine detail. There's definitely a lot of mistakes and lessons I learned making these models. And if I did them again, I would probably do them a lot better because I know what I'm doing. At the beginning, I had no clue because this is actually one of my first model kits ever. So it was a bit challenging. As for the Atlas 89 foot flat car, I think it rolls pretty nice. Although I did have some problems with one car always derailing. So I'm not sure why that is. It's only in one section of the track and also had some incidents where the trip pins would strike some pieces on the track, which it shouldn't do. So I'm also going to get a coupler height gauge just to make sure everything's all right. Uh, but yeah, that's my experience on making this military model train. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Definitely took a lot of time and effort to make this. So I appreciate it if you hit that like button down below and leave a comment what you guys think. Let me know if you guys are interested in future military trains because I am open to that. Subscribe if you want to get notified of future videos. And anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Never really noticed what you want With you I don't ever feel 